What If Season 2 Episode 9 Thoughts. This episode is called What If Strange Supreme Intervened. Another episode I love, like most MCU stuff. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. And yeah, uh, before I get into the chronological ones, so this episode does a thing that happens in comics a lot. We haven't seen it that much in the movies. I guess to some extent with like Magneto in some of the movies. In the comics, there are characters going back and forth, you know, between being good to bad to good. Because like basically, like Strange, Strange Supreme at the very start was basically good. He was trying to to save Christine's life. Then he became evil. He chose to do evil because he was doing stuff that he was told, you can't do this, is not okay to do. You know, even to save someone's life, this is going to go badly. Then he became good for the the Guardian of the Multiverse thing at the end of Season 1, and now he's basically back to, to evil, though, you know, there's still, you know... He does eventually manage to recreate the the Christine universe, but any, anyway, yeah, you know, so yeah, really appreciate that actually being in an adaptation. It's, you know, a lot of the comic book adaptations, you only really get one. You see someone go from good to evil or evil to good. We did also have it somewhat with Wanda. So, yeah, getting into the chronological note. So yeah, we open with first a recap of Peggy's story, then we get a recap of then, then yeah, some dialogue between the two, then we get a recap of Strange Supreme story, and then we get into the the actual episode and yeah, he's if Strange Supreme has been collecting universe killers, which like immediately, yeah, that's a very logical, that's the thing, like, Stephen Strange has a tendency to get obsessed. He, he, it's not okay to do things right once, he has to do them right a million times. You know, that's how he used to be about surgery, he had to, you know, he, he had to rise, he had to be the best surgeon, the, you know, spotless record. And, and, yeah, the Uatu told him, watch this one. Just this one. And then he turned his back and, you know, he's like, five minutes! I, I had my back turned for five minutes and you've collected, like, dozens, maybe hundreds of, of the universe killers. Because that's what he does. You know, he just, he can't leave well enough alone. That's his major character flaw. And I, I love how these are, like, so much of the MCU, it's, you know, they... they stick true, they stay true to the characters. You know, they maybe find a, a twisted aspect to a character that we used to think of as good, but it's in character. Like, hypothetically, if Steven suddenly said, you know, I want to conquer the world like Thanos did, you know, it'd be like, what, where did that come from? But no, he's obsessive. Yeah, one of the things is he's obsessive, and the other major character flaw is he... If, if he, you know, he, need, he needs to be the one to save everyone, you know, to, yeah, to save the people he wants to save. You know, in, in Doctor Strange 2, you know, the other doctor points out, was there really only one option for, for winning against Thanos? Or was that the option where you were in control? You know, was that, so, so we see that again here, you know, he's willing to, yeah. He, he sacrifices, you know, not only universe killers, but also righteous heroes in order to save Christine. Uh, and let's see, then we... Yeah, we... <laughs> the problem is one of them escaped. And yeah, she, you know, she knew that and, and dropped several references. I, I don't remember all of them, but some of them were like aliens and gremlins. You know, if you get enough of a certain type of thing, eventually one will escape. And yeah, so she's, she goes to to take the the universe killer back and you know, well, she shows up. So, are you here to help or just narrate? So, just narrate it is. And let's see, yeah, we see, you know, Red Skull 
completely took over in this universe. And yeah, Kahori reappears, and this is, of course, we don't need to see the conversation, the rest of the conversation between them. We saw them meet, and now she's in, in this other universe, and the, you know, clearly some conversations have taken place between them. When, when the fo Forge first came up, you know, it's, it's a great way to, because, like, obviously what happened, you know, S Strange Supreme didn't tell Peggy, but he, t he did tell Kahori, and that's, you know, one of, the, that's, that's where he lost Kahori, you know, she was like, you can't do this, this is wrong, and so he's like, okay, you know, send her off into, into a world, and I'm gonna recruit someone to take care of her, and I won't tell that person about the forge because that's where I lose people. And you know, as I've talked about on this channel before, the thing with extremists is they really struggle to view the world outside of their extremist lens. You know, we see this with people who've been radicalized. You know, everything that they see is proof that they're right. Nothing, no matter how you know, like there's that thing about like incels are convinced that women only want you know a, a, an alpha and you know she yeah no you know the the yeah she'll she'll never settle for a beta and then you know well there's plenty of supposed betas who are in long-term relationships with women and then the incel said ah but just wait any second now, she's going to dump him, and then she's going to go for an alpha because she just wanted the money. You know, everything is proof. Nothing is counter, you know. And, and yeah, the, the, you know, Strange Supreme, he couldn't imagine without it having been proven. He, he thought, yeah, the Forge is a good thing, obviously. I, you know, so, so I don't have to keep it secret. And, yeah, and, and Kahori tells Peggy, I'm not the universe killer, he is. Which is a great, you know, that's, that's very, very comic booky twist of, you know, the person you thought was the villain is the hero kind of thing. It doesn't only happen in comics, but, yeah. And, yeah, he says he's tying up loose ends, and then we get another very comic booky trope. There's a big, like, fight going on, and there's a bunch of exposition being, you know, did he tell you about the forge? You know, just, yeah, absolutely love to see it. And, yeah, we get the, the detail that he's trying to resurrect his own universe, and <laughs> Peggy frees a bunch of the, of the universe killers, which, yeah, you know, that's... <laughs> you know what, Strange Supreme... If you get another chance, just don't tell them anything. Because, like, the first one you told about the Forge, she turns on you and tells the next person. The next person you told her about all the, you know, oh, those, those things, those are all universe killers. Yeah, <laughs> I sure hope nobody frees a bunch of them. That would really tie me up. You know, just, like, next time, just say that they're, like, I don't know, Christmas ornaments or something. Tis the season. But the, the, yeah, um, and the, yeah, so they're running room to room, so much glorious fan, fan service in this one, so many cameos, I love the, the, there's like a, a cyborg, or more cyborg version of, of Rocket, and just the, the, yeah, just tons of, tons of great references, um, and they run into Zombie, Wanda, you know, really glad that she's back, and and love Hella turning the them against, uh, yeah. And Kahori says that zombies are fairly universal. I honestly don't know enough about Native American culture to say if there are zombies. Certainly, there are a lot of different cultures where the idea that someone who looks dead isn't truly dead or has come back. That, that appears in a lot, but yeah. Um, 
And and yeah, Hella shows up. Zombie party, you know, zombies. This is my kind of party. And they've got the the green glow in the in the eyes that her zombie warriors had in um, Ragnarok. And ah, crap! What was the other character? Some other. Oh right, right, Surter. Poor guy never gets to finish his. You know. It, it, the, he's always trying to monologue. People are always like interrupting and disrespecting. Always love to see, well, hear Clancy Brown. Kate Blanchett didn't have a huge amount of lines this time around, but you know, she had a lot of great ones, nevertheless. I I do hope I mean there's there's another season, and it's possible the movies as well. I really hope we get to see what some have christened hell of the white the the you know redeemed hella that we got in was that let's see it wasn't yesterday i guess it was the, the day before yesterday episode seven yeah what if hella found the ten rings and thanos gets snapped that's yeah that's at this point i guess that is just his his fate if if any evil Thanos that we encounter now, you know, it didn't happen with the the one that had been redeemed by T'Char Lord, but yeah, the the evil ones just get killed off very easily and sometimes snapped. You know, and it's it's Killmonger who did it. Always one to appreciate dramatic irony. And yeah, they reach the forge, and I really appreciate like it's Big. It is huge, this thing, and the the light emanating from it. Really great design. Just yeah. Uh, there was a lot of like Kahori using her, you know, speedster power and strange like stopping it. You know, sticking something up to stop. And yeah, Peggy also did that once or twice. I don't know if that needed to happen quite so many times, but. It was great to get Kahori back and have her do all this really cool magic stuff. And and they have her speak English in this one, maybe to, to have it more like Peggy and Strange Supreme are also speaking English. Maybe that's why. But they do let her every so often dip briefly into Mohawk. That was really cool. And did I say cool? I mean respectful. It's you know it feels it it works for the character is what I'm saying. I'm not trying to commodify someone else's culture here. And the the let's see yeah you know Strange Supreme is like no it's becoming unstable and trust me I'm the expert on being unstable. And yeah very cool when you know Strange yes. Maybe you've been to you know solitary for too long. There's more of us than there are of you, but that's not really true, is it? And he makes more, and Peggy's like, "Good idea," and then she makes more of those. Yeah. And then we have the yeah. He he puts her in an illusion, and you know, the the yeah Steve Rogers in the illusion is is really trying to appeal to to Peggy and you know saying we can be together kind of thing this is the same illusion that strange supreme pulled on the regular doctor strange in the first strange supreme episode so yeah makes a lot of sense and you know he did say earlier in the episode that he completely understands you miss Steve so yeah very nicely done and i like that the you know one of the little butterflies is the clue and let's see yeah and and yeah a bunch of the the, the people fall yeah universe killers and righteous heroes are like tossing their weapons very very cool when they're stand there and they've got the ten rings they've got the old father mjolnir it's, you know just yeah it's very very cool very fan servicey and you know that's the thing like a lot of these what if episodes are pretty fan servicey 
but like this one usually also have some kind of concept that really is like yeah you know even like he lost everything once but now he's back he has some power left you know he has yeah he's been given power again so now he's willing to give up everything again to you know save Christine and yeah he he gets out the the demon form some really cool stuff with that and yeah they really they try to give him a chance to to surrender and the the demon form takes back over and he ends up inside the forge and we see that he did recreate Christine's universe but he's never going to be in it which tells me she might actually not have her life ruined this time okay to be fair in the movie itself he didn't like ruin her life but yeah let's see and yeah and and yeah so Uatu you know I appreciate he he did know what was coming you know and and he's like it's no we 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 needed you you know it's it's not you're the one who's going to to fix this which yeah appreciate you know there's there's a number of situations where us guys just have to step aside and let a woman take care of things and the the yeah so the um yes she she yeah she she says you know she's she's ready to go back home but can we take the scenic route and yeah he, he what was it he said you you have no idea you're you're going to love this something like that and you know we see Yggdrasil the the world tree that Loki created you know in in the season 2 finale yeah show finale of his own show so yeah um i think I think that is what I have to say for this one. So this is a pretty popular episode. There are 30 votes so far on IMDb and 28 of them gave it 10 out of 10. And the remaining two gave it 9 out of 10. So yeah. But yeah. Um, really really cool to to see again it's gonna be a little while I guess before the next let's see oh wow I didn't really okay uh, oh that's right yeah yeah echo is January 9th so it actually won't be very long at all but then it says late 2024 for the next and Captain America Brave New World is oh hold on yeah Deadpool 3 is the next movie July 26th yeah Captain America Brave New World isn't until February of 2025 yeah I'm really looking forward to Echo it looks fantastic so and they're doing the thing where they drop all the episodes on one day and it's five episodes that's gonna be interesting because that definitely the the season length has been an issue for a lot of the Disney Plus MCU shows. So, yeah, but yeah, really, you know, hugely enjoyed Echo the character in the um, in the the Hawkeye show you know really looking forward to to seeing the role reprised by Alakwa Cox